Good afternoon. We have some strong winds picking up in southeastern Kelowland. Otherwise, sunshine, 58 are high in Sioux Falls, 55 in Aberdeen, 61 in Pier, and 62 in Rapid City. Skies will stay clear as we head overnight tonight, and the winds picking up in western South Dakota, 33 the low in Sioux Falls, 29 Aberdeen, 32 in Pier, and 36 in Rapid City. We have a warm but breezy weekend ahead of us. We'll take a look coming up as we begin midday in Kelloland. Live from Kelloland Media Group, midday in Kelloland. Travelers expected in Sioux Falls for the National Pheasant Fest and Quail Classic this weekend. Plus, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear arguments on whether former President Donald Trump is immune from criminal prosecution. I'm Natalie Brand with the timeline of the case and how it could impact the campaign trail. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. South Dakota lawmakers are looking at a new plan to increase teacher pay. The Senate Education Committee voted in favor of an amendment that calls for school districts to increase teacher salaries by at least half of the state aid increase from the legislature and now heads to the full Senate. The House version calls for teachers to receive increases that match the state aid increases. For a closer look at the debate and what the measure could mean to South Dakota teachers, go to our Capitol News Bureau page on our website. A red flag warning is in effect today in Yankton from noon till 7 o'clock tonight. A red flag warning means that critical fire weather conditions are in effect. A combination of strong winds, low humidity, and warm temperatures can contribute to extreme fire behavior. Any fires that develop will likely spread rapidly. Outdoor burning is not recommended. Pivoting to weather, it's going to be warming before too long, huh, Megan? That is right, Dan, and that fire weather will continue. Right now we have some sunshine, 52 degrees in Sioux Falls, and a south wind picking up right now at 21 miles an hour. And that strong wind will continue as we head through this, the rest of the afternoon and into tonight. In Rapid City, some sunshine and 55 degrees, a south wind at 6. Here is a look at our current temperatures, 54 in Yankton, 45 in Brookings, 28 in Sisseton, 47 in Mobridge, and 55 degrees in Buffalo. And our strongest winds right now in southeastern Kelloland, out of the south at 10 to 20, even 30 miles an hour. And that is bringing in some warmer air, but it is also helping that red flag warning. There is a look at that red flag warning in extreme southeastern Kelloland. Those strong winds plus those dry conditions, like Dan mentioned, means those fires could get started very quickly. There are a couple fires in Texas and Nebraska, which means we are seeing some smoke moving in with that strong south wind as well. Thicker smoke could stick around as we head through this weekend when we keep that strong wind around. So for today, strong winds in southeastern Kelloland, otherwise sunshine, 58 in Sioux Falls, 55 in Aberdeen, 61 in Pier, and 62 in Rapid City. Then for tonight, the stronger winds pick up in western South Dakota as well. Clear skies, 33 are low in Sioux Falls, 29 in Aberdeen, 32 in Pier, and 36 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, more sunshine. The stronger winds continue in southeastern and western South Dakota. 64 the high in Sioux Falls, 62 in Aberdeen, 65 in Pier, and 64 in Rapid City. The winds dying down just slightly as we head into Saturday. More clouds. 66 are high in Sioux Falls, 54 in Aberdeen, 59 in Pier, and 57 with a chance of a few very light rain showers in Rapid City. We'll take a look at the timing of those rain showers and what to expect in your area in just a little bit. Thank you, Megan. The eyes of the bird hunting world are on Sioux Falls this week in the National Pheasant Fest and Quail Classic. About 300 exhibitors will be sharing their products and services inside the Premier Center, Convention Center, and Arena. Tyler Easterly owns Buckshot Apparel out of Louisiana. He and his wife have been traveling to shows across the country, but Pheasant Fest marks their first trip to the Midwest. We hunt a lot of quail and uh, we wanted to get out here and meet some guys who love the same thing that we love and uh, be out here and represent our brand. The National Pheasant Fest and Quail Classic starts at noon tomorrow and runs through Sunday. There's also a concert for conservation featuring the band Trampled by Turtles tonight at 730 inside the Washington Pavilion. The Supreme Court will hear at landmark arguments in April on whether former President Donald Trump is immune from prosecution in a case related to January 6th and attempts to overturn the 2020 election. 
Lower courts had denied the president's claim of absolute immunity. Natalie Brand reports in Washington on what this means for his federal election interference trial. It's a question that's never been before the U.S. Supreme Court. This isn't just me. This is all president. They have to be given immunity. Otherwise, they're, they're going to be unable to act. Weeks from now, justices will hear arguments related to former President Trump's claim and consider whether and if so, to what extent does a former president enjoy presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office. This Trump immunity case is not a case that any justice on the Supreme Court wanted to decide. I think, frankly, they concluded they just had no choice given the importance of the case, the magnitude of these issues. Lower courts have already rejected Trump's arguments of absolute immunity, including the D.C. Federal Appeals Court. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached, would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first. A ruling by the Supreme Court on the immunity claim is expected by June, putting the former president's federal election interference trial on hold. But the timing puts Trump's legal battles on a collision course with the campaign trail. Legal experts say it's a big question whether the trial can be scheduled and wrapped up before votes are cast. You're starting to get very, very close to that date where the Justice Department will have to say we're too close to an election. We're going to have to fold our tents and see what the world looks like after the election. The timing could put the DOJ in a difficult position with early voting in some states scheduled to begin in September. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. This is one of four criminal prosecutions the former president is facing.